I'm waiting. It's not 7.30 yet. It just comes back in the text. The last thing is black. You realize you're live. I know. Well, what can I do about it? There you go. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday night. Do you all have your cup of tea, coffee, Milo, Bonox, whatever you drink? I have mine. Let me just get rid of that. And let me just get rid of that. There we go. Oh no, hang on, that might not work. <laughs> Whatever. Hello and welcome. I know I'm repeating myself. How are you all? I do hope that you have all had a lovely weekend. Stayed warm and dry out of the wind and the hail and I understand here in Melbourne there was flooding. I wasn't here so I don't know. I missed all that. I was in sunny Tasmania and it was glorious. It was cool but the days were beautiful. We had sunshine. It was just delightful. I didn't want to come home. It was like being a little tropical paradise out of the winter. It was really nice. So tonight I'd like to talk to you about making meals cheaper because we all need to make meals cheaper. We don't need to make them smaller. We don't need to make them less healthful. We don't need to make them harder to make or prepare, but we do need to make them cheaper because not so much groceries, although they are going up, but meat, lamb, so you've got beef, lamb, um, chicken, fish are just skyrocketing. At the moment, pork seems to be the most price stable meat around. So if you're a pork eater, you're picking up bargains all over the place, I'm sure. But beef, lamb, chicken, fish are just so expensive at the moment. I've still got a croaky voice. Sorry, folks. Can't do anything about the croaky voice. So expensive at the moment that I've been thinking of how every time I make a meal, I think of how I can either stretch it or make just the meat component go further or even make it meatless. And tonight we're going to focus on meatless meals. And meatless meals don't have to be horrible and they don't have to be boring and they don't have to be beans and rice or whatever. They can be all sorts of things. Um, not everyone would like to go meat free. I think you've heard me say before, I'm married to a feed the man meat man. He likes his meat. He came off a farm from a farming background. Meat was never an issue. He likes his meat. But we just can't afford to have meat every night of the week. So I stretch it or I make meatless meals that are so good, he doesn't even know they're meatless. And do you know his favourite meatless meal? It's, it's not my favourite, and I actually find it a pain in the neck to prepare, but Wayne's favourite meatless meal is baked beans on toast. I know it sounds silly to say it's a pain in the neck to prepare, but by the time you cook the toast and heat the beans, it's a messy meal to me where I like, one pot, veggies, everything in, prepare it in the morning, get it on, cook it, serve it, it's done. Baked beans on toast isn't that. But it is meatless. It is very inexpensive. Even if you buy brand name beans, it will be inexpensive. And it's quick. But it's also very good for you because baked beans are really, really healthful. I'm just going to have a sip of water, folks. And see if that makes much difference. It doesn't make much difference. I'm sorry about that. I think I might have talked and laughed too much over the weekend. I've been hoarse all day. So his favourite meal is baked beans on toast. If I serve Wayne baked beans on toast once a week, he's a happy man. He loves it. And often on a Saturday night when I will have something simple planned, it might just be him and I home. It might just be three of us home. So we'll have mufti type dinner and Wayne will have baked beans on toast. I might just have an egg on toast. I might just have a bowl of cereal, whatever I feel like. 
we don't go. And so I slip those meals in for him and he doesn't even know that it's a meatless meal. I don't talk about the meals that don't have meat in them as being vegetarian or meatless. It's just dinner. It's what we're having for dinner. What are we having for dinner tonight? We're going to have quick rice patties and salad. We're having quick rice patties, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower and cheese sauce and some beans. That's what we're having. We don't, I don't talk about them as being meatless or vegetarian. And so I think that perhaps most of the time they don't even realise there's no meat on the plate. As long as they've got a plate, remember I've talked about the psychology of this, as long as the plate looks full and they have stuff that they can eat, they're happy and it's inexpensive. If you slip one meatless meal a week into your meal plan, you can cut your meat budget by about, well, obviously by a seventh, but around, for us, it's around $7 a week, I would save on meat. Now, I don't spend a lot on meat because we don't, we have meat a lot, but we don't eat a lot of it. Does that make sense? We stretch our roasts. I stretch chicken fillets. I stretch mints. So the savings aren't huge. But if you are used to having steak um, and you cut that steak me meal out, there goes $30 into your meat budget or your meat slush fund. So you can top up again. It's easy to do and it's, I don't know, it, it's wise. We don't need to eat a lot of meat. Remember, we just need a piece of beef the size of the palm of our hand, a piece of chicken the size of the palm of our hand. About 180 to 200 grams is ample, more than enough for our needs. We don't need the whopping great, what do they call them, those kilo steaks or things like that. That's just ridiculous. Apart from the fact that it's expensive, it's just ridiculous. It's not good for us. So we don't need to do that. But there's lots of other meatless meals we can have. And if you think about it, you probably already have quite a few in your rotation that you just haven't even thought of as meatless. Tomato soup and cheese toasties is a meatless meal. You can do um, scrambled eggs or an omelette as a meatless meal. Things like um, cream cheese patties, meatless. Quick rice patties, meatless. You can do um, a vegetable fried rice, a meatless fried rice. Just leave out the bacon or the ham or the chicken or whatever you would normally put into it and add peas and corn. I know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a, I'm a heathen. I put corn in the fried rice. Um, bean shoots, shredded silver beet is really, really finely shredded silver beet or spinach. It goes really well in fried rice. Onion, spring onion, beat an egg and crack a, an egg through it for some protein. And it can be a meatless meal too. Um, Singapore noodles are a meatless meal. There's lots of them that we can do. And they're all rather inexpensive meals. And they are all quick meals that don't take a lot of time to prepare or to cook. And that's something else that we need to be aware of, especially if we lead busy lives. And who doesn't have a busy life these days with working, home, family, garden, church, school functions, youth groups or social clubs or whatever you are involved in, we are all busy. So we can get something really good and tasty on the table without an issue, without lots of time in the kitchen, that'd be good. Like rice patties, you can have prepped in 15 minutes, 20 minutes if you've got to cook the rice. They take about three minutes each side to cook, so six minutes to cook. Under half an hour, you've got dinner done and cleaned up because you clean up while you go. It's easy. Okay, now another meatless meal that I make is our vegetable moussaka. That one takes a little bit longer to prepare, but it's worth it. It's a special occasion dish. It's really good. It's not expensive. It's tasty, isn't it, Hannah? Yep. yep. We like vegetable masaka. It freezes, so I usually do my big, I have the big Corningware roasting pan. I usually fill that, and that gives us three meals um, of that. So I cook 
once, eat three times, which is another really fun thing I like to do, one of my favourite things. Spring rolls, if you make spring rolls. Spinach and ricotta pasta. Spinach and ricotta cannelloni or um, a mushroom... Um, Go on, mushroom um, quiche or a tomato and onion quiche or a vegetable quiche. In our veggie quiche, we do thinly sliced carrot, really thinly sliced, so it's almost paper thin. I do that on the mandolin. Um, tomato, onion, mushrooms, carrot, thinly sliced, thinly, thinly sliced sweet potato goes into it. It's really good. Lots of lots and lots of nutrition packed into that quiche, but no meat. It's it's tasty. It freezes. It reheats well. Something to think about. <sighs> I once had someone say to me that they just oh no 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 they had to have meat every meal they just had to they couldn't possibly not have meat for a meal for their lunch or dinner. And I was looking at what they were eating and they were eating a salad sandwich. And I went, well, what's on your sandwich? And so we, we deconstructed the sandwich. And there was obviously the bread, there was lettuce, um, grated carrot, sliced tomato, beetroot, cheese, um, a sliced egg and some beetroot. No meat. It was a meatless meal. That sandwich was a meatless meal. Go figure, peanut butter sandwiches are a meatless meal, full of protein, but meatless. So, even if you have a husband like mine who just adores his meat, absolutely insists on having it, you can you can serve a meatless meal without fear of rebellion or, you know, someone saying, oh, I'm still hungry. You just call them what they are. So, you know, it's veggie soup and crumpets or it's um, Spanish rice, which is another meatless meal, along with bean burritos. Haystacks are a meatless meal. There you go. And most people I know who've tried the haystacks love haystacks, meatless meal. Inexpensive if you use tortilla, um, the pita chips instead of corn chips, even cheaper, but just as tasty. Um, so I've got a list here, if, excuse me if I look down because I'm reading off my list of some of the meatless meals that are on our menu plan regularly. Now, if you get my newsletter each Thursday, I put my meal plan in and you can look at it, but there will be two or three meatless meals in that rotation. I just don't say they're meatless meals. It will be whatever it is. It necess doesn't necessarily have meat in it. So soups, quiche, omelettes, fried rice, Singapore noodles, we've talked about those, cannelloni, tortellini, uh, Spanish rice. Did I have that twice? No. Um, haystacks, bean burritos, vegetable curry. There is a fantastic recipe for vegetable curry in the vegetarian recipe pie, uh, recipe pie, recipe file. It is so good. Um Cream cheese patties, quick rice patties, tomato-based pasta. So if you have pasta and just a, a marinara sauce, that's a meatless meal. Some parmesan on the top, some garlic bread on the side. That's not too bad. Veggie masaka. The gluten schnitzels that I made a few weeks ago, another meatless meal. And there's a lot of different ways you can use those, not just as schnitzels. Uh, baked bean curry, again, that recipe is in the... Um, vegetarian recipe file on the Cheapskates Club website. Really good, really, really good. And it's a meatless meal. That's one of those dishes that if you go camping a lot, the baked bean curry is really good to make um, in a camp oven. Calzones, corn fritters. Who grew up having corn fritters? Corn fritters are a meatless meal. Have them with salad, have them with veggies. Meatless meal. And they're nice cold the next day. Um, bread fritters. Bread fritters are something I learnt to make oh, not long after disaster struck and we were really, really, really broke. We had no money coming in. It just all seemed to be going out. And 
I found a recipe and I it was a new idea or a Woman's Weekly or something like that for these bread fritters. And it was using the crusts, you know, the ends of the bread, the crusty ends of the bread. So I'd save them and you soak them in milk and squish them up. And then you add onion and herbs and an egg and beat it up. And it becomes like a batter. And then you just fry them. And the outside goes crispy and the inside's still light and um, sort of meringue, I suppose. It's like that. They are really good. If you have those with gravy, they are so good. We had those regularly for a very long time. They are really good bread fritters. Love them. Um, veggie burgers, veggie rolls. The veggie roll that I used to make for Hannah to take in her school lunch was simply pastry and then I'd grate potato, onion, carrot, um, turnip or swede, whichever I had, um, add some Vegemite to season it and flavour it, cook it all down and then bind it with mashed potato. So I already had the grated potato in it, but that was sort of shards of potato. But then just a little mashed potato, which I'd saved from dinner the night before or a couple of nights before, bind it with that and make it like a sausage roll. On the pastry, roll it up, brush it with some milk, sprinkle it with some sesame seeds, bake them in the oven. She loved those. If you put a little cheese into the mix, she's like the cheese and veggie rolls. And she really liked those. All the kids really like the cheese and veggie rolls. They're really easy to make, but if they're buying them at the tuck shop, even back then in primary school, they were over a dollar. They were a dollar twenty each. They were expensive back then. I'd hate to think how much they are now. Um, they're just a few of the things that are in our meal plan on a fairly regular basis, but they're all meatless. There's no meat in them. Now, one of the things that I really like about not cooking meat is not having to clean the stove. Well, not clean the stove, but, you know, there's no fat spatters everywhere. The pan doesn't get all irky and fat spattery. Kitchen cleanup's a breeze. It's much quicker if you're not cooking meat. So most of those meals are really quick, done in under 20 minutes. They're all reasonably healthy. It will depend on how much... Um, cheese or oil or whatever but you're in control of that so if you don't want as much cheese in a particular recipe don't put as much in it's different to baking baking is a precise science so if it says one level teaspoon of this and two level cups of that then you must do that to get the recipe to work but these savory dishes aren't as precise so you can fiddle with them and tweak them to suit your taste or your dietary needs. So if you don't need or you don't want to eat as much cheese or you don't want to put an egg in, don't. There's egg substitutes that you can use and it could be something as simple as um, a teaspoon of vinegar. We'll replace an egg. Um, you can use soy flour, in a, a teaspoon, a tablespoon. Not sure, can't remember, to replace an egg. Little things like that. And there is on our website, there is actually in the tip sheets, a whole list, a tip sheet on egg substitutes um, with all different things that are available because you don't have to buy the expensive no egg or whatever. You can create your own egg substitute. And quite often you might find that you've already got the ingredients for that in your pantry. Uh, well, yes. Um, the link family says <clears throat> eggs are best for meatless meals and to check out the Japanese egg recipes as they eat four times the amount of eggs per year that Westerners do and they have yummy recipes. Yum. Okay. And then Lorraine said the vegetable curry is really good and she did make some pies out of the leftovers. Good idea. I have that down here somewhere. And then Priya. <laughs> said we eat veggies over the weekdays and meats on the weekends. Um, she uh, says, I've realised even vegetarian dishes, if cooked well, taste great. Um, yes, okay. And her meat budget is $100 for two months for a family of three. Oh, that's a great 
great meat budget. I love that you save meat for the weekends. Makes you it have, special. Makes it special, but it means you've got more time so you can actually think about how you're going to prepare it too, which I think is, re is really nice. And weeknights, I remember when our kids were little and, you know, even you do school, you do homework, you have sport after school or music or whatever, you're coming home, you've got things to do and then you've got to have dinner and bath and do reading, check spelling words, all those things. It takes a lot of time. Cooking meat, cooking meat takes a fair whack of time, even if it's just rissoles or sausages. It takes a fair whack of time and you actually need to be there to watch it cook. It's not like um, veggies that you put in a pot, put them on, put the, put the steamer on the stove or the dish in the oven, walk away and leave them for a little while. You can't do that with meat. So but it's time consuming to cook meat too. Yeah. Now I'm glad, um, it was Lorraine that liked the veggie curry? Cool. Great in pies, yes. I imagine it would be delicious in pies. And that's another thing. That's another thing for making meals cheaper. We'll deal with leftovers, but, you know, it's a good way to stretch a meal too is to turn it into a pie. I know that there are families who have special dietary needs for whatever reason, but it doesn't mean that they, you, they, you, they, me, whoever, can't switch your recipes around to be meatless. You just you just fit them or switch them to suit what you need in your diet. So obviously if you um, have a tomato sensitivity or a tomato allergy and it's more common than you would think, then you don't do a tomato-based dish. It might be meatless, but you don't do it if you can't use it. By the same token, just because you're gluten-free doesn't mean you can't go meatless. There are alternatives to pasta or gluten-free pasta, which is rather expensive. There are alternatives that you can use to do those things. So you make it work for you and you fit it in around your family, around your lifestyle, around your taste, because I say the vegetable curry is lovely and you might be sitting there going, Ugh, curry, hate the stuff. Fine. Don't make it. Turn it into a creamy vegetable. Use the veggie base and turn it into a creamy vegetable sauce to have over rice or on its own, over pasta if you can have pasta, something like that. You don't have to put the curry into it. It's just turn it into a creamy vegetable sauce. Um, which brought me to, and it's gone again, oh, brain like a sieve I need to go away for another four days um oh, it's gone no never mind it'll come back creamy oh sorry folks brain like a sieve it was something I don't have in my notes so I can't refer back to it ah, never mind anyway also think about cooking once eating two or three times if you're going to do this you don't need to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So, you know, if you're doing fried rice, you're doing Spanish rice, you're doing pies, whatever, little quiche, do an extra lot. It doesn't take, only takes a few minutes more in preparation time, same amount of time to cook them because, you know, and then you've got them in the freezer for an extra meal or an extra two meals, which is a blessing at times, a real blessing at times. All righty. Oh, I know what it was. Nothing to do with meatless. Sorry. Um, for Victorians, Tasman Meats has silver side or corned beef for $7.99 a kilo this week. Now, Tasman Meats are all over Melbourne and there's a few country stores. So Google them if you have never heard of them before. But that's a great price. That's a stock up price sad as I am to say it my stock up price has gone up but that's a stock up price for silver side so if you like it and you can't get it any cheaper and it's about ten dollars a kilo in supermarkets and most butchers these days that is a stock up price for silver side 
Uh, I can't remember. It's gone, gone, gone. That's just really annoying. When you're cooking a meatless meal, you don't need any special skills. You don't need to know how to cook a steak or how to tell if chicken's cooked or, you know, when the pork is perfectly ready. You need to know how to cook vegetables, how to tell when veggies are done. That's easy. Everyone can do that. So there's no, no great skills required to cook meatless meals. There's no special tools required to cook meatless meals. You've probably got a fry pan or some sort of food processor, even it's just a sharp knife. You have a stove, an oven. Um, if you've got a slow cooker, great. That's about all you need. Um, and you don't need any special ingredients. If you find a recipe that doesn't have meat in it and it has um, an ingredient that you don't already have in your pantry, zip over to the um, weird ingredients substitute list on the website and see what you can substitute for it. You don't have to buy special ingredients. So if it's got some weird spice in it that you've never heard of and definitely don't have, look up on the substitute list, see what else substitutes for it, and chances are you've probably got it already. Crisis averted, money's still in your pocket. You don't need to do that. What do I need to do? Buy a special ingredient. Hmm. or a herb or a spice. The other thing to remember that I've learned over the years is seasoning is really important. If you're not putting meat into a meal, think about the seasoning, so the salt, the pepper, um, what herbs or spices are going into it to give it um, a flavour. Meat dishes get a lot of their flavour from the fat in the meat, and this is going to sound gross, but when I did my, um, probably about 30 years ago, no, not 30 years ago, 20 years ago maybe, now I did a um, nutrition course, and it was almost enough to turn me vegetarian, um, but a lot of meat, meat gets a lot of its flavour from the fat, but it also gets a lot of flavour from the urine that goes through the cow produces or the sheep or pig produces while it's alive that sort of sends proteins or whatever that into the flesh. So that sounds gross ugh, and it's probably not widely advertised, but there you go. So think about it. That's why meat has a unique flavour. So if you're not putting meat into a dish, you do need to be aware of the flavourings. Season it. Don't be afraid to season it. I don't use salt, but I'm happy to use pepper, lemon, lime juice, um, cumin, coriander, cinnamon, um, nutmeg. Ginger is good often as a seasoning in vegetable dishes. Curry powder, of course. So think about, think about the seasoning because you want your meals to have flavour, flavourful meals. Otherwise, they're just bland and boring and you might as well go back to the beans and lentils or beans and rice or the, um, what is it? What was it? A sesame seed in a glass of water. That's what mum used to say. What's for dinner? Sesame seed in a glass of water. Okay. Okay, so... I've gone through, oh, sorry folks, I've gone through all of that. There you go, meatless meals. You can make your meals cheaper by substituting meatless meals for meat meals. If you're going to do a spag bowl, do a vegetable spag. Instead of doing a spag bowl, do a marinara. Just leave the um, mince out of your sauce. Make sure you flavour it up a bit with some extra herbs, a little bit of garlic. Perhaps do a salad and a garlic roll or something on the side or a herb roll on the side or even just plain butter bread and save some money. You've saved yourself 500 grams of mince, which is around $4 by leaving, just having a marinara instead of a spag bowl. It doesn't hurt to do these things occasionally. And if you don't give them weird names and if you don't say, well, we're, we're not eating meat tonight because we can't afford it, 
It's not going to be a drama. When you turn it into a drama, we can't afford to eat meat, so we're not going to, we're going to have this and this and this. That's when it becomes an issue and that's when you start to feel um, unhappy and discontented because you can't afford the meat and you really want it. But if you, oh, well, so we're going to have this, we're going to have, um, what we have tonight? We are going to have mushroom quiche with a nice green salad. Sounds really good. Instead of, we, we won't have chops tonight. We'll have mushroom quiche and green salad or mushroom quiche and veggies. If you really want to be a little extravagant, throw, in some, throw some wedges in the oven or some chips in the oven, put some chips or wedges on the side. There you go. Another really good, that's what I was going to bring up. So I just remembered, another really good meatless meal is the humble baked potato. Who doesn't love a stuffed spud? And I deliberately buy the big potatoes and bake them so that I can stuff them. And we have things like coleslaw. Um, we'll put pineapple. We might put uh, baked beans. Baked beans and cheese in a baked potato is really good. Um, it might be some vegetable chili. Uh, it could be um, leftover haystack mixture. It might be just plain old cream corn and cheese on top of the potato. They're all really good. They're all meatless. Baked potatoes are really filling. You can choose the size. The best part about these is you choose the size. So I choose bigger ones for Wayne and the boys, smaller ones for Hannah and I because we don't, we don't eat as much as they do. And they bake in no time. My secret to those is, though, when I'm going to bake a whole potato, I scrub them really well because we don't want dirt, poke them all over with a fork, wrap them in wet, um, you can use wet paper towel, wrap them in wet paper towel, not dripping wet, but wet paper towel, put them in the microwave. Now I do them in a circle so they're sort of like a wreath and bake them. And I usually do them for five to ten minutes depending on their size. Then I take them out and brush them with a little bit of oil or melted butter, put them in the oven on the baking rack and let them cook till they're fork tender. By microwaving them, they don't just they just don't take as long in the oven. Um, so we're not waiting an hour, an hour and a half for a whole potato to cook. I haven't got the oven on that long, save a bit of money on electricity. But they taste, they still taste really good, really, really good. Now you can do them like that too when you're away camping. Same deal, um, minus the microwave. Wet paper towel, do two layers of wet paper towel if you're camping, putting them in the camp oven. Put them in the camp oven, put some coals on the top, coals underneath and just let them cook. And they're really, really good. And that's easier than trying to wrap them in paper and foil and bake them in the fire for when you're camping. Um, Bob is off to bed because she's not well, but she said, what about meatless pizza? Meatless pizza, yes, Bob. I'm so I'm glad you're home, though. Hope you'll feel better soon. Um, vegetarian pizza, yep. When we make veggie pizza, we have our sauce. We do mushrooms, capsicum, onion, tomato, pineapple. I like olives on my side. Cheese on top, bake it in the oven. Delicious. Really, really delicious. Pizzas don't take a lot of ingredients either. You only need a little bit of everything to make a really good pizza. So that's a great um, great suggestion, Barb, and thank you for prompting my memory. Really, really good, and I do hope you feel better soon. Um, Maureen would like to know if you'll be able to show the eggplant in Sarka. Oh, Maureen. Someone else, Leonie or Lorraine, or someone asked a few weeks ago about the um, vegetable masaka too. The only problem, I would be happy to do it, but it takes a while. Can we pre film it then? We could probably pre film it, but yeah, it takes a while to actually do it because. Uh, 
would take me but from scratch from when I start cooking masaka to when I put it in the oven is around 40 45 minutes there's a not a lot of work in it but there's a fair lack of cooking in it if that makes sense because in my masaka I can tell you how I do it I slice the eggplant and I slice it in rounds I like it in rounds but you can do it long ways if you want to in rounds I don't salt it I know there's a lot of older recipes that say you salt it and leave it for 30 minutes and rinse it off. I don't do that. Um, so I do that, put it aside. Then I dice onion. Um, I slice zucchini and celery. And I usually put in two or three whole tomato, uh, fresh tomatoes sliced, depending on the size of them. So if they're smallish, I'll put in three if they're big nice big ones out of the garden then i'll only do two but slice them up put all those aside i have um then i do potatoes so i if they're just washed potatoes they just get scrubbed if they're brushed potatoes which is what i normally have they get washed and peeled and sliced and i sit those in some cold water until i'm ready for them then i make a white sauce and have it all ready to go so that in my pan then I heat some oil and I quickly cook the eggplant slices and put them away to drain then I add the onion the celery the zucchini and cook that up in the same pan and while that's happening I've thrown some garlic so I use two or three cloves of crushed garlic because we grow it if you don't you can buy garlic or use the dried equivalent and stir that through when that's uh, sauteed so it's clear you know, so the onion is clear take that out of the pan drain the potatoes dry them really well then i put a little bit more oil and some butter in the pan now the oil stops the butter from burning not a lot just a little and i brown the potato on both sides i want the potato to be golden i don't want it to be cooked but I want it to be nice and golden brown. So turn the heat up a bit, do that. Take that out of the pan, white sauce is made. So then in my dish, I layer the eggplant. I put the next layer on, top it with the potatoes, then the white sauce over that. Sprinkle it with a mixture of cheese. I use a mixture of, gra of grated tasty parmesan and mozzarella over the top. Bung it in the oven. Now it takes a while to cook probably about 40, 45 minutes on about 190. Test it because you want the um, potato to be cooked. That's my, when the potato is cooked, I know the dish is done. Now you'll see it bubble up over the sides of your baking dish. Um, as it cooks, you want to put a mat underneath in case it overflows. I've had it overflow sometimes. It bubbles a bit too much. There you go. That's it. But the, there's a bit of... Um, not a lot of actual physical work to it, more time in assembling it, but it's so worth it. It is a really, really good dish, really, really delicious. So it's not a true masaka in that there's no lamb in it and we add the potato to the top, but it is good. And you can pretty much add what you like to it in the veggie line in terms of um, what you think will go flavour-wise. So yeah, we could do a we could do a, um, recorders making it. I'll see see how I go. I'm always a bit nervous when I do that, <laughs> but yeah, it's re it's a lovely lovely dish. It freezes, it thaws, it reheats really well. It's actually even nice cold. Mm. Okay, that's it. No more questions. Cool. Guys, tomorrow night on Channel 7 at 7.30, um, David Kosh, Koshy, is doing a show that I can't wait to see because I'm, I'm fascinated by this concept of um, he's going to talk about how you can make $10,000 in 20 days. So I'm fascinated to know how what he's going to come up with Channel 7 at 7.30, um, you might be interested in that. I'm definitely interested. 
I know there's quite a few bloggers that talk about how I made, you know, an extra $3,794 this month. And when you look at it, they've sold half their house, half their belongings, and that's fine because they've done that for that month. But then next month, if they want to repeat that, what are they going to do? Because they haven't got that much stuff left to sell. So I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to show you how to come up with the $10,000 in, in 20 days. I might even, if it's doable, I might think about setting myself the challenge, but you never know. So that's on tomorrow night, 7.30. Um, I'll be back on Thursday night with something that I haven't thought of yet. Oh, sorry, folks. I haven't thought that far ahead, but it will be with something, and it might even be a meatless meal that I can show you or a couple of meatless meals, and we can see how easy they are to put together. In fact, I could probably pick a couple of meals off our menu plan for next week and make them ahead. Um, I've been away for four days. So before I left last week, I cooked four, four dinners and put them in the fridge for Wayne and the boys. So I did um, pasta bag. I did a chicken curry, a butter chicken and pies and left them in the fridge for them to heat and eat. Well, I, was, I even pre-cooked the rice for the curry and the butter chicken. How good am I? They did all they had to do was put on the plate and heat it. So they ate most of them. There was only one left, and that's because they decided to have fish and chips instead. So never mind. But that didn't take long. So maybe we can think of something like that. Yeah. Freeze meals, that sort of thing. I'm hoping I can turn this into a series of making meals cheaper. We're talking about um, going meatless. It could be using leftovers, um, doing soups or different things like that that we can do to make meals cheaper, how to make salads cheaper because we're coming up to salad season and I, we love salad. We would eat salad all year round and we pretty much do. Salad isn't necessarily a cheap meal, so how we can make salads cheaper. So over the next few weeks, not necessarily every week, but we'll be doing a series on making meals cheaper because it's something that I know I'm always looking at and I'm pretty sure most of you are too. Alrighty, I'm, I've got my voice half back but it's getting a bit sore and scratchy so I think I'm going to say good night and I shall see you on Thursday night in the kitchen over there. My kitchen's just over there so I'm going to be good. Um, with something yummy to make. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps us with our YouTube rankings and that just means that I can do more exciting things for you if I have a better YouTube ranking. YouTube's a funny, funny beast. So I can do more exciting things with the channel if I have a better YouTube ranking. And um, so a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you click the little bell, then you'll always be notified when there's a new video or when I have a show coming up. Alrighty. And now I really have to go. So thank you so much again. And I shall see you on Thursday. If you have any questions, put them in comments or go to our website, Cheapskates Club, and use the contact us form to um, let me know you've got a question and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Have a lovely couple of days, folks, and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.